Sure. I uh, did my training at the Cleveland Clinic for my uh, residency and my fellowship in urologic oncology. I currently practice in Grand Rapids, Michigan at Spectrum Health, uh, where I'm an associate professor at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine and also an investigator at the Van Andel Institute. So I'm a urologic oncologist. I'm a surgeon uh, who serves as the research director for uh, genital urinary cancers. Uh, and is uh, a lead in the uh, clinical cancer program that we have at Spectrum Health. Patients with localized kidney cancer have a lot of options, uh, and I presented evidence about all the various options that need to be considered. And uh, what I tried to make very clear is that there's no one best treatment for all patients. There's a lot of things to consider, and really the things that uh, come into the fore are who's the patient and how many other medical problems are they encountering at the time of their diagnosis. What are the specifics of the tumor? How large is it? Uh, how complex in terms of uh, deepness into the middle of the kidney? Uh, that impacts the success of various treatment options uh, and the success of opportunities to spare the kidney. So those are important. And then uh, the ultimate is the surgical factors. Uh, and that can be impacted in great part uh, by the center uh, at which the person's receiving care, uh, whose hands uh, they're in, uh, in terms of uh, receiving information regarding the types of options, uh, and also obviously what part of the country they live in because there are regional variations. We summarized some of the, the specifics, uh, and my, my task today was to talk about open partial nephrectomy. Well, partial nephrectomy is the largest uh, number of patients will have this because the most patients uh, with T1 uh, renal cancer are candidates for it. Uh, recent studies would show that at uh, centers of excellence, upwards of 90% of patients are able to keep their kidneys uh, if they have a small kidney cancer, four centimeters or less. And really for tumors, even up to seven centimeters and select tumors that are larger, we are able to keep their kidneys. There's a variety of ways this surgery is done. One of them is with traditional open surgery. Uh, there's also minimally invasive options, so a laparoscopic approach to partial nephrectomy or a robot-assisted laparoscopic approach. And again, there's varying techniques that be, can be used, but the important thing is to keep the kidney. Uh, and in the vast majority of patients uh, with small renal masses, we can preserve uh, the kidney. Absolutely. And so there's been a lot of uh, discussion over the last decade about increasing use of partial nephrectomy, especially for smaller tumors. Uh, some of these are slow growing. Some of them we, we even consider uh, surveillance or watchful waiting uh, in patients with significant uh, medical problems. But for patients who are good surgical candidates uh, and have small tumors, these are ones that we almost always can spare the kidney. So for smaller tumors, in almost every case, the kidney can be preserved. And so a partial nephrectomy is an option uh, that enables a patient to keep their kidney and keep more of their kidney function. Even for medium-sized tumors, we can often do it. And so tumors that are even up to seven centimeters in size or bigger, partial nephrectomy may be an option. But what's the benefit to the patient? Well, it's a, it's a real benefit in terms of kidney function. When you remove one kidney, as you'd expect, there's a significant change in kidney function. You might expect about 50% loss, but on average, patients lose about 35% of their kidney function because the one that stays in is able to uh, take up some of the work for the lost kidney. But with partial nephrectomy, on average, patients lose about 10 to 15% of kidney function. And so that's clearly less than with radical nephrectomy. For patients with perfectly normal uh, kidney function, that may not be essential. But for many patients who are older or who have diseases that can affect their kidney function, this is a very uh, significant benefit to a kidney sparing approach. So patients with hypertension, diabetes, uh, kidney stone disease, coronary artery disease, smokers, uh, or any of, another, uh, any of a number of other conditions that can affect the kidney uh, set up a situation where a partial nephrectomy is clearly preferred. Patients with localized kidney cancer can expect great cancer outcomes if they have uh, appropriate treatment. They can rest assured that cancer can be treated well. So the other thing they really want to ask is, is there a chance to spare my kidney? Uh, and what does uh, this physician or this surgeon feel are the chances that they can preserve the kidney? If they hear that their tumor is not amenable to a kidney sparing approach, they might want to check with that surgeon whether uh, other surgeons would agree with that assessment that their kidney is not able to be salvaged. 
uh, because there's clearly some variability uh, in practice patterns uh, for small renal masses, right? So one essential question for a new patient to ask is, is a partial nephrectomy an option for me uh, given the size of my tumor and the location of my tumor? If the answer is yes, that's uh, good for their long-term outcome. If the answer is no, they might want to double check uh, and know that uh, this is indeed the case that their kidney is going to have to be removed. Right. So second opinions are reasonably common for this disease because, again, uh, multimodality care is important. Uh, this is a disease where uh, experts who are experienced in all the various uh, stages of disease, from early disease to locally advanced disease to metastatic disease, are more comfortable uh, with management uh, and the different types of options that are available. The other thing to consider is that they're minimally invasive approaches, there are traditional surgical approaches, and for patients who are not as good candidates, there are non-surgical alternatives. Uh, and so centers that uh, have all of these uh, techniques at their disposal can provide patients with a full spectrum of options uh, and the best possible care in any individual situation. I think it's important for patients who are newly diagnosed to get as much information as they can the Kidney Cancer Association has wonderful resources uh, available on the web, and there are a number of, number of written resources that are helpful as well. Absolutely. To know that you're not alone, uh, that there's thousands of people across this country who have been in this situation before, uh, and through organizations such as the Kidney Cancer Association, you're able to get linked into patients, loved ones, uh, and providers uh, who can really help you through uh, with your condition.